Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about analysis for our criticism. There are four steps in crit critiquing an artwork. Step one was description. Step two is analysis. Step three is interpretation. And step four is evaluation and judgment. Analysis is when we look at how a work is organized. We talk about the elements and the principles of art and design that seem to dominate the work. If this feels like this is harder to do than just describing what you see, it is true. Um, this takes a little bit more work, practice, and effort to, to work it and looking at analysis. We are going to look at how the art elements work together to create the principles of design. When we are doing this, we are analyzing an artwork. And for our definition for art, Analysis really helps us mentally separate the parts or elements of an artwork, thinking in terms of textures and shapes and forms and light and dark or bright and dull colors, types of lines and sensory qualities. In this step, you consider the most significant art elements and principles of design that we use in the artwork. In analysis, we ask questions. Is there a subject matter or art element that is repeated a lot? What is the most dynamic looking feature of this artwork? Is there anything that is being contrasted? That means use of opposites. Is there a theme or subject matter that seems to dominate the space of the artwork? And we do this with both using the art elements and the principles of design. Here's a refresher for the principles of design. We have repetition, balance, emphasis, proportion, contrast, unity, and variety. If we look at this painting again that we did our description on, we can talk about it in some aspects of analysis. When I look at this piece, the dominant thing that I notice is that there's a lot of human forms being repeated. This seems to be the dominant theme or subject matter of this work. They all seem to be looking in one direction towards the water. We see that color is highly used in this artwork. And there are very strong contrasts that seem to almost split the painting into a diagonal. We have very light and bright colors on the top diagonal of the composition, and then we see darker jewel tones being contrasted on the bottom uh, diagonal of the composition. So where we see that dark shadow is setting up a interesting contrast that separates the people in the sun from the people standing in the shade. There also seems to be a repetition of vertical shapes that seem to sort of pepper the composition. If you look at the trees and the vertical forms of the ladies um, and the vertical sailboats and other objects that are in the composition, we see a lot of things that have a vertical feeling to them. Um, another thing that sort of unifies this overall composition is the way that Surratt used paint with the, with the soft, dappled little points of paint that he used. Everything has been given a unity of this fuzzy, soft look to it, like it's almost um, a blurred image. So these are just some of the things that when I look at this painting, I, I think of as being very important ways that um, repetition and color um, are doing for this composition. So what I would like you to do for the activity for today is in Google Classroom, I will have the picture of Van Gogh's Starry Night. Most people are pretty familiar with this composition. Um, you see it anywhere from posters to t-shirts to coffee cups. So we all probably have seen this composition at one time or another. So what I would like you to do is to an, do an analysis of this painting. How are the art elements working? How are the principles of design working? So look for this in Google.